I'm Alexander Kernbaum. This is my first G4G. It's great to be here. I really want to thank Bob Hearn and Scott Worthman for making me feel welcome here. OK, seven ways to make an ellipse, one that could be useful, six minutes. Can we do it? I think so. OK. Uh, so why is this number zero? I really hate algebra. I can't wrap my brain around this. I know some people can, but it's just not for me. But then I look at something like this, and my brain relaxes. So uh, some of you might be familiar with the idea that an ellipse is a conic section. You can slice a cone. That's actually kind of surprising. I would have assumed that you would get like an egg shape. Uh, if anybody has an intuitive explanation for why you get an ellipse instead of an egg shape, I'd love to talk afterwards. You can also slice a cylinder. OK, but this is when I really fell in love with ellipses when I was about 10 or 12 years old. Someone gave me two thumbtacks and a string and a pencil, and you can draw an ellipse. Right? Why does this work? Well, it uh, really comes from one of the definitions of an ellipse, which is that the lengths a and b, the sum of the lengths a and b, is constant. Here's a little more of a mundane way. You can take a circle and you can stretch it. Right? And this may be a little surprising. I actually thought prior to doing some research that uh, you would get an oval shape. But no, it's actually an ellipse. You can also view a circle from a great distance. And uh, following the rules of perspective, you get an ellipse as well. OK, so now we're going to get a little more funky. So you can draw two circles together like that. And then you draw a radial line out from there. And then you draw a vertical line and a horizontal line. And the intersection of those two lines is going to land on an ellipse. So you can draw as many radial lines as you want to draw an ellipse this way. Uh, proving this is a little strange, uh, but it really comes back down to the, a lot of trig and the definition of an ellipse. OK, so these are some of my favorites. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the Archimedes trammel, uh, which also the way that I, I'm, a, I'm a mechanical engineer by training, I actually, the way I think of it, Archimedes trammel is it's a, uh, it's a one to two cycloid in, in disguise. And you can see that on the right there. So both of these allow you to make ellipses by attaching essentially a marker to, uh, to a mechanism that's, that's rolling in this way. This is kind of the spirograph way of making an ellipse. OK, so. Uh, Four bar linkages. So uh, I, as a mechanical engineer, this is a little inside secret. If a mechanical engineer says something is a four bar linkage, what they mean is it's a one degree of freedom system. That's pretty much it. Uh, in this case, the one degree of freedom system does have four linkages, and you can kind of see them right there. And why, why can you make an ellipse this way? The ellipse is the cross point of the two of the linkages right there. That defines the, circle, the ellipse. Uh, there's actually a really neat explanation. Uh, you can draw a tangent line to both ellipses there. And that tangent line uh, also acts as a line of symmetry. And if you remember the de definition of an ellipse where the blue line plus the yellow line equals a constant, because of the symmetry, you can see that the yellow line on the opposite ellipse is constant as well. And so what that means is that that length right there is constant. And if that length there is constant, you can replace it with uh, a rigid linkage, essentially. OK. So but what's the real big idea? That was six. That was six. Not bad, huh? in three minutes. Uh, the, the thing I'm really excited about is uh, you have all these different ways of creating ellipses. You can actually layer them on top of each other to describe the same ellipse, and you end up with some redundancy. right? And so what would happen if you were to, for instance, uh, take the string method and combine it with the trammel method? Or if you were to take the four bar method and combine it with the ellipse that we were going to create anyways? And that last one, I think, is really interesting. and. Uh, Let's see if we can play there. OK. So if you uh, had the gift bag, this will be in your gift bag. Uh, if you don't have a gift bag, come and see me afterwards. I've got a few extras. So these are two ellipses defined by the four bar linkage. But there's some really cool things that happen. Uh, the ellipse and the four bar linkage are redundantly defined, which means you can actually take one of the four bar linkages out, and it still works. So this is a three bar linkage ellipse. And that has some really cool properties. Uh, and I should say this only works in compression. right? In tension, it doesn't work. But uh, in compression, you get some really cool properties. So here, uh, find a friend, combine your ellipses, and you get some really neat effects. So there's one linkage, and that had one degree of freedom. Now, two linkages has two degrees of freedom. You can translate and rotate the end ellipse there. You see that? Now, three degrees of freedom, and you're actually under constraint. This, if it's not stable, would explode. And then you can do four, and it still not exploding. Right? This is really cool. I'm actually applying compressive forces here. And uh, it's incredibly stable over a wide range of motions. So what we have here is 
the ability to push a rope, right? So as a mechanical engineer, that really excites me. Uh, and not only that, you can uh, push a rope over really wide angles. You can push a rope through a 90 degree bend, right? Which uh, defies the laws of physics, right? Uh, actually, it doesn't. Uh, but it's a good magic trick, uh, which I'm very excited to share a little geometry mag magic here today. Uh, so please uh, come and talk to me afterwards. I'd love to continue the discussion, and it's great to be here. Thanks a lot.